Good morning, everyone. I'm going to start sharing the screen to show my presentation. Thank you for the invitation to World Aquaculture 2020 webinar series from the World Aquaculture Society. My name is Luis Fernando Aranguren, and this is the title of my presentation, Interaction of Microsporidium EHP and the White Feces Syndrome in Shrimp and Elsewhere So in the agenda, I'm going to talk briefly about four different aspects about EHP. And then in three different scenarios, uh, I'm going to talk about EHP and white thesis in Indonesia, India, and the first report in Latin America. So this figure briefly shows how enteric pathogens such as EHP and HPND have caused a decrease in the shrimp production during the last 10 years. So that is the reason everybody is working on, on this pathogen, especially EHP. Now, regarding the white feces syndrome, several studies has been focused on to study the causative agent of white feces. There are some study in which Vibrio cholera has been reported as the causative agent. Some other enteric bacteria, as the ones that you can see here, I cannot even pronounce them. Some other uh, research has been focused on the verniform bodies that resemble gregarines as the causative agents or associ associated with white, uh, white feces syndrome. And there are some reports in which uh, they confirm that EHP is not the causative agent of white feces syndrome. So first, uh, I'd like to give a, what is the definition of white feces syndrome for our study? So basically, for our study, the presence of white or whitish floating uh, fecal strings, as you can see here with the green arrows, uh, on the surface, on the grout pond, along with the presence of shrimp displaying whitish discoloration of the GI tract and sometimes associated with some soft shell in the animals is what we consider the white feces syndrome for this study. Now, EHP, EHP is one of the most important pathogens in the shrimp industry worldwide. And it has been reported in, since 2003, 2004, first in Peneus monodon, later on in Peneus Bename. Basically, the target organ is the hepatopancreas, where as soon as they start causing severe infection, it damages the ability of the hepatopancreas to gain nutrition from feed. It causes slow growth, high size variability. Usually, in the later stages of the disease, it has been associated with vibrios. That we already know that vibrios are opportunistic, opportunistic pathogens. In some severe cases, this disease can cause chronic mortalities in tree farming. Uh, here we have a typical picture of animal displaying EHP. You can see the typical pale discoloration of hepatopancreas that is also typically for any other enteric pathogens such as NHP and HPND. To have as a comparison, we have a healthy section of hepatopancreas. And here we have a hepatopancreas affected by EHP. We can see here the plasmodium stage and also the spore stage. The geographical distribution of EHP here you can see the red circles. So basically our Southeast Asian countries where EHP has been reported. Pretty much most of the important shrimp farming regions, you, uh, EHP has been reported. Now in the Western Hemisphere, in South America, we reported for the first time the presence of EHP on 2016. So the first case scenario is on 2016 on Indonesia and we were having a project under the oil twinning project. So basically we decided to have the first approach to, to the white feces. So basically, as you can see here, we are collecting the whitish 
a GI tract, gastrointestinal tract uh, of white color. And then we also took samples of animals for histopathology and PCR. Uh, in all the animals in which uh, white feces uh, were displaying the animals in the GI tract with a typical whitish discoloration, we were able to confirm the presence of EHP by histopathology and uh, PCR. Also, we took samples of, of the fecal strains. We did paraffin blocks with the fecal strains. And we did histopathology. And later on, we did in situ hybridization. Again, all the samples of fecal stream floating on the ground pond were positive for EHP. Not only EHP was found in the animals displaying white feces, we also found a secondary vibriosis, uh, basically what is called the septi hepatopancreatic necrosis, usually caused by uh, opportunistic vibrios. The next year, in 2017, we decided to visit uh, some shrimp farms and we wanted to do a similar study. We took samples from hepatopancreas and the GI tract in one pond displaying white feces and another pond without displaying white feces. So in this figure, we can see uh, we determine the EHP load by quantitative PCR. The samples of the hepatopancreas of the animals displaying white feces, the EHP load was significantly higher versus animals that didn't display the white feces discoloration of the GI tract. Um, the intestine, like the white intestine versus the normal color intestine, brownish, we also found significant differences. Again, uh, we found uh, animals that display not only EHP, but also they display in septic hepatopancreatic necrosis, as it has been reported the previous year. In 2018, we decided to add one more sample. We have a three different sampling units. Healthy pond, ponds displaying the white feces, and pond with history of white feces. And basically is what the farmers have observed in the past, that basically the white feces is a phase of the whole problem because later on the animals, as they think the animals cure themselves, and they enter to a different phase. It's called the pulse white feces. So we decided to take uh, samples again. Here we have a picture of a healthy animal displaying the brownish normal color. Also, we have animals displaying the typical white feces. And animals uh, pulse white feces, basically those animals are the ones that display the soft shell. If you you see, you can see here in the, in the figure, the difference in the EHP load. And again, the higher amount of EHP was found in animal displaying the, the white feces syndrome. After of animals this, with history of white feces, EHP was also observed, as you can see here. Um, it was significantly lower versus the animals that were displaying white feces. So basically at this point, we know that when the animals were displaying white feces, the EHP load was higher, really high. On 2019, we did similar work in India. Basically, we, we visited 16 farms in the south and Andhra Pradesh farm and in Surat farms. Using the same methodology, uh, we observed the same clinical signs at individual level and at pole level, basically the the floating focal strings uh, floating on the grow pond, animals displaying white feces and animals displaying the soft shell. We follow the same procedure. We took samples for histopathology and samples for PCR. We were able to confirm by the two methods the presence of EHP in the white fecal the blue uh, FC uh, affected ponds. So here we have the table because just wanted to confirm that basically EHP was found in several environments in high salinities up to 55 and low salinities up to 450. Also, regardless of the stocking density, low stocking density such as 10 pieces per square meter or 
high stock intensity, about 80 shrimp per square meter, we found ESP. And it was found also in small animals, as six, seven grams, and also in large animals, 26, 32 grams. In out of the 16 farms analyzed, we found EHP in 15 farms. So we confirmed the result by histopathology and in situ hybridization. Here we found something interesting. Basically, in the same tubule, we found spores, EHP spores, and also we found some bacteria. These basophilic masses indicate the presence of bacteria. So basically, it's confirming our suspicious, but basically the combination of spores first and later on bacteria is what may be associated with the presence of white feces. Now, moving on, on 2016, on the Western Hemisphere, specifically in Venezuela, as you can see here, this is an important shrimp farming region. So we saw some of the growth ponds displaying slow growth, size disparity, chronic mortalities, high uh, feed conversion rate, soft shells, and the coefficient of variation higher than 25%. So basically it's this typical clinical signs at pond level suggests the presence of a chronic infection. So we run all the tests and the animals were only positive for EHP. So here we use uh, two different uh, primers, 18S and spore well to confirm the presence of EHP. Also the animals, uh, we saw the plasmodium confirmed by histopathology and by in situ hybridization. Here we can see the positive reaction for, for EHP. But what, the, what is more interesting for us, in 2018 in the same region, the same farms that reported first EHP or EHP like, Two years later, we reported the first presence of a white feces. This is this picture has become famous. It was taken by a colleague of us. So again, we took samples from the animals displaying the white feces, and guess what? We found EHP severe infection of EHP. Here we have some example of the plasmodium plus the uh, EHP spores present in the affected animals. This is a typical picture from one of the farms uh, that we uh, analyzed it, in which EHP was found. Again, we confirmed by two different methods. We use a qPCR and also the spore wall. The animals were so positive that even the nested PCR in the first step gave us positive results. So basically, in four different scenarios, we can see kind of the evolution of EHP white feces. Basically, we start with a healthy population of animal showing the typical brownish color of the GI tract. Later on, we start seeing some yellowish, whitish discoloration of the GI tract. And let, even later on, we can found the typical white uh, GI tract in the affected animals. And finally, the animals are so weak is when we observe the placidus and the soft shell in the affected animals. Now by histopathology, we started with a healthy population with a healthy hepatopancreas under histopathology, showing the typical R cells, B cells uh, in a normal values. Later on, we start seeing some sloughing of all type of cells, especially B cells and R cells. Later on, this sloughing of, of the cells continue you see less uh, abundance of lipid droplets. And later on, basically the animal is not eating anymore. Even there, is, there are no healthy cells in which EHP can replicate easily. So that may explain why the qPCR is lower in this population. So at this point, the animal probably is showing the soft shell. At the end, this uh, injured tissue uh, is colonized by heterotrophic bacteria such as Vibrio. Uh, we know that Vibrio lives uh, together uh, in, in close association with shrimp farming. So basically the animals at the end will end up with a uh, Vibriosis. So as a final remarks, uh, we have found that there is a strong association between white feces syndrome and EHP. And also in EHP endemic regions, 
EHP can explain the clinical manifestation of white Crisis syndrome. And finally, we have an opportunistic pathogen. The, the primary pathogen in this case, EHP, is not the only one that causes white pieces, but in our study, in this case, it was the primary pathogen. In association with opportunistic pathogens such as Vibrios, and a possible unidentified environment, environmental factor end up uh, with the white pieces. And I just want to thank all the team from the Apocultural Pathology Lab at the University of Arizona. And this is the funding agencies who provide funding for this research. Thank you, and I will be welcome to answer any questions. Thank you very much.